Hello friends and welcome to the Metaducky Emotion Appendix. Now some of you are thinking, hey man, all this philosophy stuff, you're just overthinking it. You just need to listen to your heart. Hmm. Listen to your heart. Where have I heard that before? I don't know. What does your heart tell you? Huh? What does your heart tell you? Listen to your heart. What does your heart tell you? Whatever you do in your life, you know, just believe in yourself and follow your heart. You gotta follow your heart. Your short to do impossible things if you follow your heart. <laughs> Listen to your heart for the answer and follow it to the end. Everything comes from the heart. Do this, and you'll never go wrong. Listen to your heart. Oh yeah, everywhere. Let's see, listen to your heart. That's interesting. I wonder what the Bible says about that. Here's a verse from Jeremiah 17. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Huh. I wonder if anybody has an experience that matches up with that philosophy. Let's see. Oh, for sale, one heart. Horrible condition. We'll take anything for it. Please, just cut it out of my chest and end this suffering. Whoa, bro. Whoa. That's, that's dark, man. All right, what else does the Bible say about your heart? Let's see, from Mark chapter 7. For from within the hearts of men come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, debauchery, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. Everything comes from the heart. Sweet mercy, it's like a parade of horribleness. Or in, in this case, it's, it's kind of a cute parade of evil and death, but eh, they're clip art. If you think about what they actually stand for, it wouldn't be this adorable, but that's the nature of clip art. What else does the Bible say? Oh, Ecclesiastes 9. In the hearts of the sons of men are full of evil and insanity is in their hearts throughout their lives. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Book of Proverbs says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but he who walks wisely will be delivered. Hmm. So it seems like the Bible's not really buying into this whole listen to your heart, follow your heart thing. What's the deal? If you've been looking at the metaphysical map, you might have been asking, where do emotions fit in? Well, when I made the map, I didn't include emotions because emotions are not really part of the process by which we create ideas. And so they don't really fit in metaphysically in terms of philosophy, but they are important in the sense that emotions play a huge part in the way that we apply our own metaphysical map or worldview or religion or philosophy. So emotions are a response to an experience. Emotions are subjective, internal feelings about an experience which act as a kind of thermometer. Now when your emotions first appear, emotions happen to us. We don't premeditate them. We experience them as a result of experiencing something prior to them. So we perceive something, either accurately or inaccurately, and that becomes our experience. Our experience results in an emotional response to the experience. Now, your feelings result from what is real. Your feelings don't create what is real. God creates what is real. God creates the universe and everything that's in it. He creates the physical laws. And then things happen according to the way that he designed it and all of the choices that we make. So we perceive what is real. We perceive it either accurately or inaccurately and we have some experience. Our emotions result from our experience. So ultimately, our emotions are a result of what is real being perceived by us. But our feelings don't create the reality, they are a result of it. But sometimes your feelings will lie to you. Your emotions are not necessarily an accurate representation of what is real, just as your perceptions might be illusory. And your heart is deceitful. Sometimes your heart just lies to you. So remember, your feelings result from what is real, they don't create it. And this is the answer every time anyone's argument is, but I feel. 
It doesn't matter what you feel, your feelings don't create what is real, they result from what is real. Your feelings don't change the facts, your wishes do not alter reality. Your feelings must be subordinate to your intellect, or you will be easy to lie to and quick to fall into self-destruction. Wisdom must lead emotion. Feelings can be wrong. 2 Corinthians tells us, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Taking your thoughts captive also includes taking captive your emotions. You take captive who and what you are internally. You don't just say, well, my feelings happened to me, they must be right, I will follow my emotions, I will follow my heart. You take them captive and make them obedient to Christ. How we feel about something can become part of our prior knowledge context. So reality is perceived, either accurately or inaccurately, we have an experience, our emotions result from that experience, and then how we feel about the experience becomes part of our prior knowledge context. One of the things we know about something going in is how it makes us feel, or more accurately, how it has made us feel in the past. This naturally colors our perception of it, which in turn changes how we experience it. So my prior knowledge context tells me that I really like chocolate. Chocolate makes me happy. So when I see chocolate or I perceive the opportunity to get some chocolate, I'm excited by that because I remember chocolate makes me happy. That's in my prior context. Whereas other things like beets or radishes or liver, it doesn't make me happy. So thinking about eating those, my perception is different. Now the problem with emotions is that if emotions are just left unchecked, it becomes a dangerous emotional feedback loop. It works like this. How we feel about something becomes a bigger part of our prior knowledge slash context. We become incapable of perceiving apart from our emotions, which makes us incapable of seeing what is really there. Our perceptions are constantly colored by previous emotional experiences. This leads to stronger emotional response, which continues the cycle. When the emotion is anger or depression, this can become dangerous over time. A bad experience makes you see other people, for instance, as something to be angry at. This becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, wherein you will find something to be angry about, no matter how trivial or otherwise forgettable. Your anger becomes a bigger part of your experience, which fuels the anger into hate. Your perceptions become more and more colored by your anger and your hate until you're no longer capable of perceiving truth, and in fact you would resent anyone who tried to show you something that you're angry at is not a big deal, no matter how persuasive or reasonable they were. A great example of this is the way that CNN treats Trump. But it's just this irrational pile of hate that just fuels itself, and the reason why people hate Trump has become because they hate Trump. And so anything he does or doesn't do, they hate him for that, and it doesn't matter what it is, they hate him for it. When the emotion is depression, again, this can become dangerous over time. Depression colors your perception, which makes the truth hard to see. Your experience is colored by your emotions, which further blurs your perception. At the same time, your emotion is bypassing your logic and reason and adding to your prior knowledge context without reason, making you feel you know things which you have no reason to believe. The loop becomes a downward spiral, when your thoughts are allowed to bypass your reason and logic enough in favor of your emotion, eventually you're unable to find reason to reject suicidal thoughts because your emotions have not been subject to reason and logic for too long. We have a bad experience and emotions result. This is normal and healthy. But we allow emotions to bypass reason and logic. This is unhealthy. Those emotions now color our perceptions more than our reason and logic does. This makes the truth harder to see. Our experience becomes colored by our emotions, and our experiences create more negative emotion. Soon we are depressed or angry because we have been depressed or angry. It becomes a downward spiral. This is where self-awareness is vital. When we become aware of our emotions and allow reason and logic to make sense of our emotional experience, we can seek for the causes of those emotions and see if the causes are enough to justify the emotional response. We scold children for having a temper tantrum because they lack the justifying cause for such an emotional outburst. We need to be able to do the same with ourselves. When our reason controls our emotion, we can better control our actions, and we better perceive things as they really are. The loop gets cut off. We can act in healthier ways and eventually feel in healthier ways. Emotions do not have to control us. We can control our emotions. So, listen to your heart? Well, we should listen to our hearts the way we listen to a thermometer. 
it should not control us. We should use it to gain a better understanding of our experience and environment, internal and external. So your thermometer tells you what the temperature is. It doesn't cause the temperature to be whatever the temperature is. You read the thermometer and then you make certain decisions about your environment. You look at the thermometer and you say, hey, it's cold in here. But then you say, hey, I should shut the window and turn on the furnace. You don't say, oh, I live in a cold place. Everything here is cold. And then make that your final decision. Similarly, when you listen to your heart, when you listen to your emotions, your emotions are a response to something. Don't stop at your emotions and say, well, I guess I'm an angry person. Ask yourself, well, what am I angry at? Why am I angry? And is it something I should be angry at? Or do I need to, I don't know, get some therapy or something? Wisdom is the ability to discover truth and do what is smart, healthy, and right. Emotion must follow wisdom or self-destruction will follow. I hope you enjoyed this bit of orange. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And as always, friends, remember, Jesus loves you.